The Sear flies out in War Thunder as the ultimate upgrade in the Super Mystere family. Or is it? Let's find out. The original Dassault Super Mystere was a remarkable aircraft built in France during the 1950s which set all kinds of records and was a major development in the history of European jet fighters. And I went into more detail about its history in my review of the Super Mystere B2. Towards the end of the 1950s, the Israelis started picking up Super Mystere's and were very enthusiastic about the new jet. In Israeli service, it saw extensive combat during the Six-Day War and the Yom Kippur War, but they had serious maintenance issues with its Snikma Atar engines. Well, the Israelis set about doing something they ended up being extremely good at. They took an existing jet fighter and tweaked the hell out of it to fit their specific needs and situation. The Super Mystere was upgraded to the Sambad standard, and then further upgraded to the Sear. This final version swapped out the original engine for a Pratt & Whitney J-52 out of the A4H Skyhawk and made some really serious changes to the plane's internal systems. The Sear, which they nicknamed the Super Super Mystere, was pivoted to a ground attack role, but was still compatible with the Schaffrier II air-to-air missile. The plane's new engine lacked an afterburner, and as a result, the plane lost some performance. But it was more reliable with a simpler maintenance cycle, and it gave the plane significantly better range, which is what the Israelis wanted at the time. The plane's combat system was also upgraded and included a better bombing system that allowed for very accurate ground strikes during the Yom Kippur War in 1973. In 1975, the plane was phased out of service in favor of the F-4 Phantom, but a dozen jets were sold to Honduras, where they served all the way until 1996. What we get in War Thunder is the Sear, and please forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, which is a jet fighter in rank 6 of the Israeli tech tree at battle rating 9.0. The plane's weapon system is a solid upgrade over the other Super Mysteers, and it includes a ballistics computer giving a CCIP and CCRP for its bombs. This ends up being an enormous upgrade when using this jet for ground attack. Its radar set is the basic AN-APG-30 radar rangefinder. This is a fairly simplistic radar gun sight used by a lot of other Western-aligned gunfighter jets, and it won't really do much for you outside of simulator battles. Its weapon loadouts include a pretty good selection of dumb bombs, rocket pods, and air-to-air -air missiles. The plane doesn't have custom loadouts yet as of late 2022, but you can usually find a loadout to give you what you want, and there are a lot of great options for multi-role mission profiles. For example, the loadouts with bombs and Shafrir missiles give some great flexibility in pretty much any game mode. The air-to-air -air missile it gets is the Shafrir II. This is a rear aspect infrared missile that was buffed recently and now has an uncaged seeker. Its performance is a significant upgrade over some of the earlier IR missiles. It's got 18 G's of pull, good range, and a pretty decently sized warhead for a weapon in this class. Overall, this is kind of a medium performance missile, but at this BR, it's one of the best available. The flight performance of the Sear is a bit of a downgrade from previous versions of the plane, and this is mostly due to the engine swap out. It no longer has an afterburner, it accelerates slower, and it has a reduced top end speed. The Sear is not supersonic in level flight, and it can only punch through Mach 1 if you're doing a dive from a really high altitude. But in practice, that's not ever going to happen in any of War Thunder's game modes, as it takes too long for this plane to get up there, and it takes too long to speed up to its maximum before diving. The irony is that the plane's overall performance and maneuverability is still skewed a bit towards high altitude combat, just like the other Super Mysteers, but its lack of engine power generally keeps it lower to the ground where it's not anywhere near as strong. Now the plane can put out combat flaps up to around 600 kilometers an hour, 
and they do help its turn performance. But the plane's energy retention is already pretty bad, and losing that extra bit of speed in rate turns can offset the slight boost to turn rate. I can't stress strongly enough how big of a problem the lack of engine power is for this jet, since its maneuverability and turn performance really suffers below around 500 kilometers an hour, but it's pretty difficult to keep this jet at a good speed if you're doing anything but relatively gentle turns. Generally speaking, the Sayar is better at horizontal maneuvers than vertical ones, and its maneuverability is pretty average if you can keep the thing at high speeds. But once you slow down from dogfight maneuvering, you're gonna just be wondering what the hell is going on as your turn rate vanishes almost as fast as your airspeed after only a couple of maneuvers. Just in case you ever need it though, the plane does have an air brake. Taking the Sayar into air battles can offer some flexibility as long as you keep the limited engine power in mind. The weapons on this plane are great for its BR, and having a good air-to-air -air missile along with bombs and a ballistics computer gives this plane some strong multi-role potential. You can do the common thing where you fly out, drop bombs on stuff, then look for air combat, and you can get some pretty good results with it, though I would caution that because the plane is so slow, faster jets are usually going to beat you to the strategic bases. So take a few moments at the start of a match to check out your team and, you know, plan your targets accordingly based on who you're flying out with. In air combat, the Shafrir 2 and the strong cannons can make the Sayar very effective, with the caveat that it's going to run out of steam in a dogfight very quickly and you need to try to limit engagements to just one or two maneuvers. If you can't line up a kill shot after one or two turns, you're going to end up out of speed, hanging in the air, begging for death from some boom and zoomer. So you may need to practice a bit and get a feel for when you need to exit maneuvers and how to bait people rather than always being on the attack. The Sayar is often better at a quick reversal kill than it is at being an aggressive dogfighting attacker. Flying out for close air support is really fun with this plane, but the problem is, without a radar warning receiver or countermeasures, it's going to get shot down pretty often, even at this BR, and basically any surface-to-air missile system or radar-equipped SPAA is going to wreck this thing and you won't even know it's about to happen. The good news is that with the CCIP for its bombs, you can do some really accurate ground strikes. Just know that it's very risky to take this jet in for hot dogging over the battlefield at low altitude. Longer attack runs over, through, and past the battle tend to be the safest. Don't get the wrong idea though, this jet is good for close air support, but its meta is very narrow. Visually, I think the Sayar is a pretty good looking jet. The paint job it gets is decent, and it's just got that classic look of a 1950s jet fighter, but I'll admit that the extended tail kind of seems a little out of place for this one. Landing the plane is really easy, with a drag chute and air brakes to keep the landing run pretty short. The only real caveat is making sure you don't stall out on final, since the engine power really just isn't there. It can drop gear and landing flaps safely at around 430 kilometers an hour, and you may find yourself landing this plane with a little bit higher throttle settings than you're used to. The cockpit is pretty average overall. The visibility is decent, but the forward view is obstructed pretty bad by the bracing and that gun sight mounting. Flying this thing in VR, I constantly found myself sitting up in my seat, trying to see over the obstructed view, and it kind of felt like flying a MiG-21. To close out on the Sayar, This jet gets a ballistics computer for its bombs, it has really good multi-role weapon loadouts, and it gets the excellent Shafrir missile, which is a really good weapon at this battle rating. However, it's chronically underpowered, has no radar warning receiver or countermeasures, 
and its performance suffers at low altitude, which is where most War Thunder gameplay happens. The final verdict on the Sayar is that despite its problems, this can still be a really fun jet to fly, so long as you have realistic expectations and understand that it will get shot down a lot. Its overall performance is almost painfully average, but its strong weapons can still do serious damage with a little bit of practice. As always, thanks for watching.